All right, so today we're gonna cover the proper grip of the bat before we start doing our drills. Um, a lot of times, you know, kids will just grab the bat. They won't think about their fingers or if it's too far deep or whatever. So today I wanna show you the proper grip that will really help you stay palm up, palm down in the swing when we do our drills. For me, I would just kind of lay the bat down and I'd put it right in the crease before the palm at the back of the fingers and I would just close it. The uh, knuckles kind of semi line up. They don't totally line up because then we're turning our hand too far outward, but we also don't want to turn our hand too far inward because what that's gonna do is gonna jam our hands up during the swing. So we wanna just grab the bat, right at the back of the fingers before the palm close up and just have a nice little loose grip the tension will come once you start the swing now we're going to talk about plate coverage uh, you want to make sure you're in the batter's box to where you cover all 17 all 17 inches of the plate without reaching or without getting tied up too much so that's why it's really important to make sure for me without leaning i just kind of tap the outside part of the plate now I know when I swing, I can cover the outside, middle, and inside, and I'm not gonna get too tied up, and I'm not gonna reach to hit the outside pitch. So therefore, the distance from the inside part of the plate is so important that we don't wanna get too close, we don't wanna get too far back. The height of the player and the length of their bat is gonna play a part in this. So therefore, however tall you are, however long your arms are, and however long or short your bat that you're using, is going to uh, be the decision maker in where you stand on the plate. So just make sure we can cover all 17 inches when we're doing our tee work without reaching or getting too tied up. All right, now we're going to talk about the proper ball placement on the tee with the three contact points. You'll see in our drills we have opposite field gap, middle, pull gap. We don't say opposite field, we don't say uh, left field. We want to really drive through the baseball. So contact point is so important. So with the proper stance and setup in the box off the front part of the plate with your front foot, we want this outside pitch to be right on the outside tip of the front of the plate. Right on the outside corner, right on the front, right there. The middle pitch is gonna be down the middle, probably four to five inches out front of the plate. The inside pitch is gonna be right off the inside corner, probably eight to 10 inches out, out in front of the plate. That's the three contact points off the tee that's gonna build the muscle memory with the sweet spot bat. All right, now we're gonna talk about the proper setup, proper stance in the batter's box with the tee. Now, this is only with the tee. When the ball is moving like short toss, BP, or the game, you can adjust your stance backwards, you can adjust your stance forward, whatever. But with the tee, the ball is in one place and the, tee, and the plate is in the place it's always gonna be. So we wanna have our proper setup for the different contact points as we move forward. So for me, the front foot should line up right off the front of the plate which enables the outside pitch to be right off of our front, right in line with our front knee. What this does, it enables us to get in the proper power contact position on the outside pitch and also the middle and also in. If we get too far up, it makes this too deep. If we get too far back, it makes it too far out front. We wanna make impact with the baseball at the most powerful position that we can make it and that would be with the position right there. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the placement of the ball on the tee. For me, it's about paying attention to detail. Every swing we take, our eyes are gonna tell the barrel where to go. So therefore, if we're thinking and having a visual of where the barrel's going, it's only gonna help us stay inside the baseball. We use this uh, horseshoe as a gauge. We wanna strike the, in, the middle of the horseshoe. So therefore, we wanna line the horseshoe up to where when we strike the baseball, the sweet spot of the bat is hitting the middle of that horseshoe. That's keeping us inside the ball, but we're not guiding the ball. So if we hit too far up here, we're guiding the ball opposite field. If we hit too far out here, then we're gonna round the horseshoe and pull off the ball. So that's why for me, ball placement is so important then that just adds another aspect of paying attention to detail to make your swing better. So now I wanna explain, you'll see in all these drills, we say target drill. We always want to pick off the tee, we wanna pay attention to detail and hit the ball to the right part of the field that we're training. So like for instance, outside, we're gonna hit the ball the opposite gap. So we're gonna put a target that our minds and our eyes can see that uh, that's where we're gonna drive this baseball. We wanna hit this ball in the opposite field gap. The reason is we're building muscle memory and also it keeps our hands 
in position, palm up, palm down. It keeps us inside the ball, and it keeps us from just guiding the ball or pulling off the ball. It gives us a focal point each time that we can be consistent on the uh, outside, the middle, and inside pitch that we uh, build muscle memory for the swing. So if you have uh, been through the All-American 30-Day Program, you will understand a lot of these principles that we do with the sweet spot drills as well. But if you haven't done the program, I just wanna make sure you dads and coaches out there know what to look for when your uh, son, daughter, or player is uh, doing these drills. So for me, the biggest thing to, for, to understand is the, uh, you know, the legs are first before the hands. So therefore, our legs start to swing. When we start to swing, our legs, our back hip will be uh, moving before our hands start moving. So therefore that delays the barrel and keeps us inside the baseball. If we think hands first, it's going to create a barrel going toward the baseball in a downward motion more than likely and also around the baseball. That's why it's so important to watch their hips during these drills, especially in the no stride, because they are in a, in a stationary position. You know, they're gonna wanna think hands first instead of the back hip. Make sure the hip starts, the barrel's delayed, and then the eyes are gonna tell the barrel where to go. That's why the sweet spot bat is so uh, important with the being the red part on the bat is our eyes are gonna tell this spot, uh, the sweet spot where to go when we start our swing. Um, now when you are watching the different contact points with the hip, the hip on the inside pitch is gonna have to clear more. The back hip is gonna have to clear more on the inside pitch. So on the outside pitch, the hip's gonna be more in this direction. The middle pitch, it's gonna be more lined up with the baseball in the middle. On the inside pitch, it's gonna line up with the contact point of the inside pitch. So if you feel that when you're doing the targets, if you're rolling over, you're driving balls in the ground or hitting balls to the left of the target a lot, more than likely you're thinking hands first and that's, that would be a standout point for me to look for. If, uh, if you're staying on the horseshoe and you're seeing a backspin toward the target, then your hip is uh, leading the hands and that is exactly what we wanna look for in the swing. Now we're gonna talk about the no stride when we do the no stride drill. For me, you're gonna get your set up, okay? Normal stance here, and you're gonna go through and you're just gonna stride out about three to four inches and get in your legs. Okay, this is the, and we wanna make sure we're not standing up tall, we wanna make sure we're in our legs like we're guarding a basketball player. We want to clear the hip when we make the swing. So when we go no stride, all we do is just clear the hip, pull the hands, drive the baseball. There's gonna be no load with the legs at all, okay? The hands can move. The hands can do this, but the legs do not need to move. So we do not need to load with our legs. We've already are in our stride position, ready to hit. So therefore, you can clear the hips, you can move the hands to get them going a little bit. We wanna clear the hip and be in the hitting position at contact. That's actually good with the target. Those two were good. The inside pitch is really gonna show what we're doing with our legs. So for me, I'm really focusing on this inside pitch, making sure my, I'm into my legs, my hips starting first, and I'm really staying connected. If I get disconnected on the inside pitch, the only thing we can become is rotational, and we're gonna drive the ball into the ground to the third baseman or hit it foul. So I'm really focusing on connection and my back hip on this, just everything working together to stay in this position
to strike the baseball. Okay, the next step, we're gonna add some rhythm to the swing. Um, a lot of times, you know, we wanna stay away from just stepping and uh, swinging the bat, so therefore we wanna add rhythm. I like to do the knob to knee drill. Now, you can stay as short, uh, uh, as low off the ground as possible, or you can raise your leg more. Understand, we are not teaching you to hit with a leg kick. This is just to add rhythm to your legs, rhythm to your hands, so you start to feel how the body works instead of just hitting from the standstill. So for me, I like to get in position, balls on the tee, and I just like to go nod the knee and separate. Nod the knee, separate. You can just small movement, or you can go a little bigger if you feel like you need to add more movement to feel that rhythm. Make sure when you add rhythm that we don't push back the hands with our front arm. We wanna make sure everything just flows real smooth. You see how just really the knob of the bat is all that's moving. I'm not pushing the knob back. I'm just letting everything flow. I'm going knee, separate. And you see I still have my angles in my arms ready to hit. My hands are behind my ear. Everything's ready to pull the knob and drive the baseball. See how everything is on a line with backspin, the four seam spin to the opposite field gap. Now that we've done no stride and rhythm, now we're going to go to our regular setup, regular stride that you would do in uh, BP or the game. So we're just going to get in our normal stance. We're going to have the same principles as our rhythm. We're going to get the hands ready and when we load, we want to just have the same hand movement. We're going to add the stride and we're going to make sure that we don't push the hands back, that we just let them fall in place in the slot right behind the back ear and now we're ready to strike the baseball. Mm-hmm. Stay connected better. There it is. Those, two, those two I'm staying more like this. Yeah, which is what you're the saying. The other one's just more inside the ball. Yeah. Wow, you get that extension. Through. Exactly. 